Hello and welcome everyone. So today we're going to learn how to use the scorecard table widget. So it's a specific widget, but uh, special, very customizable. So we thought it would be nice to have a session presenting all the features and uh, some tricks and um, tips how to use it and um, uh, some examples as well, so that you can see all the potential that it has and uh, give you ideas on uh, how to use it for yourself. If you have questions, there is a chat. You can just type it in the chat. Um, Benjamin, who is with me, he's going to uh, answer all your questions there. And if we have time at the end, we will also go through some um, questions if they haven't been uh, answered yet. So first of all, let me present ourselves. So uh, my name is Anna Walter. I'm the product manager at Click Data. My role is to make sure that the product uh, grows uh, nicely and um, in, uh, in respect to what you users are looking for. And uh, also, I want to make sure that you know how to use the, the product to the best of its uh, possibilities. Benjamin, who is with me, he's uh, leading the support team. And uh, if you have um, been using the support chat and support tickets, you probably have talked to him already. OK, so what's on today's agenda? So first of all, we're going to go through a presentation of the scorecard table, a so-called ID of the, the, the widget. And, uh, and then uh, we're going to see how and when we can use it. Um, and then how to easily set it up, all the tips and tricks I can share with you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. And then we're going to go through some examples to actually illustrate everything we've seen before. So first of all, uh, let's start with the presentations. So as I said before, the scorecards table widget is one of our most customizable widgets. And you are going to see why. So first of all, what is the concept of that widget? So why did we create it? Um, this widget is specific from uh, and different from other widgets in the fact that it shows like a grid layout. So it's a table, really. That's why it's called the scorecard table widget, because it's a table um, with different cells, rows, columns. And uh, it's really, think of it like an Excel sheet uh, where each cell is independent from the others. And you can do, um, you can specify the layout and the content of each cell independently. But then obviously you can also make correlations between them and have um, um, references from one cell to the other. We have currently five types of content that can be used in each cell. And that content can be dynamic or static. Uh, then the benefits of these, uh, these switches also that it's very flexible um, because of that cell by cell and row by row um, setup. And also it's very performant, we'll see why. Um, and then the, the big other benefit of using scorecard uh, tables is that uh, you can have a very consistent design across everything you show in that widget. So let's have a look at the layout. So that's the very uh, classic uh, scorecard table, the, the, what you actually get when you create a new widget on your uh, dashboard editor, when you drag and drop your widget to the editor, that's what you will get. Um, so we can see we have rows and uh, columns. That's a very classic setup for a table or um, a grid. But then we also have two other types of content. Uh, the separator, which we can see in the green line here, it is really just one cell, like one big merged cell, like you would have in Excel if you, if you think of it. And then the row section. The row section, we're going to see in detail what it means exactly uh, when we are in the, the demo time. Uh, it's basically a reference to a table uh, somewhere in Click Data and that you can just uh, show in the scorecard table automatically. And that lists actually all these fields uh, automatically. So that's what is the layout and the types of, um, um, of um, designs that you can have in the widget. And now we'll have a look at the different content types. So you can have text, very simple. You type whatever you want. Uh, you can have uh, spark charts. So these can be lines or areas or uh, bar charts. Uh, so that's what we see in the in the section uh, at the top, and then we can have indicators. An indicator is a number, uh, is a numerical um, element, and a, um, a Nikon. Then we can also have formulas, and we can have uh, empty cells as well. So they, these are the five content types, and we're also working on other content types such as images and links uh, that will be developed in the future. OK, so when should I use a scorecard table? This widget is actually very useful in some specific cases. So for example, if you have multiple KPIs, 
So if you have, um, for example, a uh, very typical scorecard to build right, with a lot of KPIs, like a uh, um, number of uh, customers, number of calls, number of orders, number of um, whatever else. Uh, in click data, of course, you can do that with the number indicators. So you can have one indicator per number. But uh, if you want to design them all in the same style, uh, you can actually use the scorecard table widget because you can do the styling in one go for all of them. So it's a huge time uh, saver if you do that. And um, it's also very interesting if these KPIs come from different sources because you can just put them all together in one table. And the benefit of using the scorecard table in this case is that actually in terms of performance, the, 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 um, the generation and the display of the uh, scorecard table will be done with just one query to the database, right? So for the whole table, we do one query to the database and we display the results. Whereas if you do that with multiple number indicators, you will actually have one query per indicator to the database. So obviously it's gonna take longer. Let's see another use case. So for example, if you have very specific calculations, like row by row calculations, calculations where you want to say, okay, I want to divide uh, the, the row number two by the num row number one. And in the row number four, I actually want to do um, a sum of row number five and row number six. So in this case, the, row the scorecard table is really perfect because you can do that row by row, right? You can do the content and the calculations uh, cell by cell and row by row, where in a, in a classic table, like the simple table or the drill down table, this is possible too, but it's more uh, challenging, I would say, because you would have to deal with a lot of formulas and um, it's not really designed for that. Whereas uh, the scorecard table widget is for that. Uh, same thing if you want to do subtotals of different types within the same table. For example, in one case, you want to do sums and the other case, you want to do averages or you want to do running averages. Um, so these things can be done, for example, in a pivot table, but uh, it's going to be difficult. And uh, from a design uh, perspective, maybe it can be challenging to show all these things in exactly the way you want it. So in this case, the, this, this widget is really good. Um, same thing if you want to do aggregations in the middle of the of a table and not at the end or the beginning, like it is, for example, in, in a pivot table. Uh, so the benefits here, obviously, is that it's very flexible, right? This widget really uh, allows you to be super flexible on the design and on the content that you show um, in it. And then finally, if you are dealing with different formats within the same um, table, for example, if you want to mix uh, things like uh, different currencies in the same column. Uh, this is something that's very challenging to do in uh, a classic table, whereas, well, in this widget, in this core table, it's really easy. Uh, you will see some examples at the end. Same thing if you want to mix, for example, percentages and numbers, um, that's something that you can do very easily. So again, benefits are the flexibility and the fact that you can customize really uh, the, um, the widget and the rows and content cell by cell or row by row. All right, um, so we're gonna go into this, uh, into the more interactive um, piece of, uh, of the, the, the presentation. Uh, we're gonna set up a scorecard table together and we're gonna see also things like formulas, the conditional formatting and some tips and tricks to be super efficient when, um, when setting up the scorecard table. All right, uh, let me switch to my presentation. Okay, so this one is the scorecard table widget. By the way, if you're looking for it, it's on the, the table section. It's this one. So when you drag and drop a scorecard table over here, you will have something very similar to what I'm showing you here. I'm just gonna delete this one. I made this a bit um, more advanced so I can show you all these things I wanna show you. So the uh, properties are accessible through the button here as usual. And uh, in the general tab, you can see the uh, classic uh, setup of all our widgets. Uh, so naming a theme for your widgets, um, the position size, visibility, et cetera. Uh, where it's gonna be interesting is here. We're gonna start in, start in the layout tab. So in this place, you can actually define how your scorecard table widget will look like. So remember we said it's a grid, right? So, so it's a number of rows and a number of columns. So that's what you can actually define here in the row section. In this case, we can see we already have rows set up and we have also a separator. So the separator is this big bar here. It's just really one cell and then the row section. 
If you want to create a new element, you can just click here, add new, and then add a row, a separator, or a row section. So just clicking here, it will go at the end. But obviously, I can place it somewhere else if I want. Oh, that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> Let's leave it like that. And uh, as you can see, you can also duplicate each row and also add elements just above or below, etc. So very uh, clear, I think. Uh, what's really cool here and um, what really helps with designing is that you can choose the height of each row. So you can make that fixed or you can actually also say, no, I want this all distributed equal so that all rows have the same, um, the same height. And you can also do that with percentages. So if you use that method, it's really useful if you want, if you don't know at the beginning uh, what type of um, um, height your uh, widgets should have. Same thing for the width, of, obviously. Um, if you want to extend it easily and uh, and have a, a very dynamic way to um, make it bigger and um, and change the size of all the elements inside it. So same thing for columns, right? You can see it here. Columns is a bit uh, simpler because we have just one type of column, which is the column. Um, so I'm just going to go back to rows quickly. So the row section, which you can see here, you see that's all these uh, elements here from row number seven to row number 11. So if I click here uh, on the properties, I can see that I'm actually fetching a column from that table, which is called PNL. And the column is called section. You can see all the other columns I have in that uh, in the table. And I said, I want this to be sorted by section alphabetically and uh, yeah, alphabetically. So I could also uh, sort it by another column if that makes sense. And uh, the result of this uh, row section is actually a grouping of all these elements in that um, in that table, in that column. So for every instance of my um, sections in this uh, data set, I will have one row here. So this is very interesting because it's a dynamic content, right? So if I'm referring to that data set and I update that data set with a new section, that section will automatically uh, show up in my uh, scorecard table once the data is actually updated. So the columns we've seen and then the cells. Um, so for each cell, you can see we can define a type and then fill out whatever we want in that type. So to make it easier, I can just click on any cell I want and then change uh, the contents. For example, we can see here, this is a formula. Obviously, we have access here to our formula editor with all the formulas um, that we are used to and that we know. Um, and then we have also a spark line, spark chart, in this case, a spark line. I can change that very easily to another type of, um, of uh, chart. And what is expected here is actually an array of numbers. So in this case, it's very uh, static, but again, you could produce that array with a formula, for example, with a data to list formula that will allow you to fetch data from a data set in click data and just list it out the way you want in that, uh, in that cell. And then we also have um, the indicator um, cell or content. So in this case, you can see I can have a value for my display here, which is number seven. And I can also have an icon value, which can be different from the actual value. Um, and both can be generated via formulas. And then the last type is actually empty. Could actually be like that. So the, um, the benefit of this is to make, for example, spaces between columns. In this case here, it's maybe not very obvious. You, you will see other, other examples where it makes sense. So what you can see here, what is interesting is that um, actually I have uh, here clicked just on one element, but it has selected a, a full uh, all these rows. It's because I'm actually within a row section, which has been defined by this element, remember? So we can see it here. All of this is a row section and all the cells here are referring to the same row section. Okay, let's move on to styling and formatting. So here you will find all the classical uh, setup and uh, formatting elements that you find in other widgets as well. So at the table level, you can decide uh, which font you wanna use, um, the alignments, colors, etc. So you can see that we can define the styling at each level. So 
it goes from the highest to the lowest. So for example, if I design something at the table level and then I change something at the cell level, the cell level have precedence over the, the table level, obviously. Um, so this way you can actually make sure that everything is nicely aligned in your widget, but then you can go down into specifics for each cell if you need it. Uh, so yeah, let's go into the cells. So in this case, we can see that each cell again has um, the elements that I'm looking for. For the Spark chart, I have some nice options here. I can decide if I want to see a marker for the min and max values in my Spark chart, and I can choose the colors and the, the symbol, etc. So some some nice uh, features here. And for the uh, the indicator, again, you will find a very familiar um, formatting options that you will find in other uh, widgets as well. Uh, and then the big difference here from other styling option, uh, from other widgets, sorry, is that the conditional styling is actually separate. Why is that? It's because the styling can be actually applied to one cell or to a range of cells. So that brings us actually to uh, this um, formatting and um, def cell defining formulas. So what we use here, you can see we, sell, we say that the cell is R2, C4. And then we have a double a dot here, uh, which is, says it's actually a range between this cell here, row two, cell four, which is this one, this cell here, uh, and up to row five, cell four. So this is this, uh, this cell here. So I'm actually defining here a full range of cells. And that's why the conditional styling is actually set apart from the cell level. And uh, you have a lot of options here. Uh, you can define if you want to target a cell, a cell range, or a row section, or a column, whatever it is, and then you define which one it is. And then you can also say that the condition is actually based on itself, on the, on the content itself of the cell, or if it's uh, on another cell. And then you have all the classic conditions, like uh, in this case, it's numerical, so you can um, define uh, whatever rules you want to set up. In this case here, I said, well, if the, the value of that cell is less than zero, then I want the icon showing the arrow down and the icon column being red. Uh, and then I've done the same for a, another condition, which is when the, uh, the number is equal to zero. In that case, I wanted to show it uh, black and with that, um, uh, that symbol. So, um, so that's about styling and formatting. So a lot of options here. And then if you go into interactions, that's the last bit of actually uh, styling, I would say. Uh, but there's also more. So for example, you can define that when you hover over a cell, you want the background and the text color to change. You can also say that actually this should happen when you select, for example, a cell. If you click on it, or if you uh, click somewhere else, you will see it's uh, it's uh, deselected. And same thing, you can define that cell row column levels. And then you have the double click, uh, which allows you to actually create a lot of cool options here. You can say on, um, on the cells, uh, you can open a dashboard, a binder, a web page, call a web service. And it's as usual with our formulas, possible to create a lot of very cool features. I'm sure that you have ideas already. All right, so that's about for the presentation of the widget and all the features. So one thing I wanted to, um, to show you is um, and explain is the way the formulas work. So let me just go back to my presentation. So I wanted to, sh to talk a bit about the formulas. So we have a range of formulas that can be used for the um, for the scorecard table widget, which are really specific to it because of that um, um, definition that we've seen before, this R1, C1 um, formatting and uh, reference system. Uh, so it's very similar to what you would see in Excel as well again. Uh, so the basic uh, formula is the cell value R1, C1. So that means from any cell, you can refer to another using the system. And then you can also, with formulas within this, the within the, um, the scorecard table widget, do an aggregation from a range. So, for example, you can do like in this example here, an aggregation of a summing up all the content between R1, C1, and R1, C3. So these would be three um, side by side cells, and you would sum up the results um, of that content. 
And then we have also formulas to refer to row section columns and also to the index uh, number within a row section. Um, from outside the widget, we can also refer to a scorecard table with a formula. So you can see it here. It's like any other widget formula. You can just call widgets and then scorecard table name and then say uh, that you want to get the values of a sale range or a specific cell or a specific cell or column or a selected cell, etc. So everything is possible here. And you can also just have the values from everything if, if you want. Okay, so um, one thing that is important to understand is that it's nice to do references to a fixed cell, but what is really important is to be able to do references to a contextual and a relative cell. So that's what uh, I've called here the R1C1 contextual. So if we look at this first example here, the R1C1 does a reference to row one, column one from, from the table. If I want to do a reference uh, from uh, the, the same column where I'm in, but I want this to be dynamic, I can use this bracket system. So for example, in this case, row one, column one would be from here, meaning that if I am in the column two, it would pick column two. If I'm doing um, a negative, number or a positive number, it would be actually the position based from my current column. In the case I'm in a column two, column minus one would be column one. Make sense? I could also say I want column three. In that case, if I'm in column two, it would pick, if I'm saying I want a column three reference uh, in a contextual way, I want the column number five actually. Make sense? So it's very simple. Uh, it just needs to, to you just need to get this first logic here and then the rest is very, very uh, straightforward. And we will see some examples um, after that. All right, so the conditional formatting we've seen, you can format anything that you want from font, icon, background, based on itself, based on another cell. So everything's possible. Um, and also you can refer to cells, ranges, rows, columns, etc. Right, so some tips for a very fast setup. So I've learned this like while working with the, this widget. So first of all, remember when you start with a, a, a widget, you actually get a scorecard table widget with some content already. My first tip is actually to just remove everything <laughs> so that you get, you start with a very clean uh, setup and uh, if there is anything uh, conditional formatting or whatever that you don't want, you don't don't get it right so you just start with a clean uh, with a clean uh, widget uh, and then uh, very useful is this duplication uh, feature which we released uh, recently so that when you have actually formatted a row um, or a column the way you want it you can just duplicate it and just uh, replicate the same formatting on all of the next columns that's very useful um, yeah, about the conditional formatting, you've seen that I have done, uh, I showed you this example before. Uh, you can actually just define the base design for your cell and then just add the conditional formatting for the others, other cases. You don't need to actually go through all the cases of your, of your conditions, but just all of them except the base one. So that saves you time as well. Uh, and then I think that the contextual formulas are very form uh, the contextual formulas sorry are very powerful and really makes sense to uh, use them all over the place. I'll show you an example for that um, as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, and the last tip is actually that when you work on your layouts and your uh, styling, if you're not sure which one it is, the R1, C4, whatever, you just click on it on the preview and then it it just automatically switches to that element in your um, settings. All right, uh, so let's have a look at a few examples now. So I have a few dashboards here uh, prepared that I wanted to show you where I have some um, scorecard tables aligned. So here in this example for uh, marketing, we can see that uh, it's actually very small. I think I maybe want to make that a bit um, bigger here. You will see how easy that is. Yep, here we go. I have actually um, uh, KPIs from Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter. And all of these uh, elements here come from different sources, obviously. But as you can see, I've styled them nicely together in that, uh, in that scorecard table. And uh, they look nice and clean next to each other. And I was still able to format them a bit differently from row to row and to add different uh, elements. 
Um, this example here is also interesting, I, can, I think. Remember, I um, I talked about the, the fact that you can actually lay out uh, the columns and the rows uh, with, um, with an equal uh, spacing. Um, that's what I have here. Oh, by the way, this is actually uh, content-based, sorry. Uh, no, here, that's what I want to show you. So this row height here is always consistent, right? Because I've chosen the um, uh, percentage uh, for, uh, for each uh, row. And as you can see here, if I go out and in, you can see it adapts, right? And same thing if I actually go to showing this in a very much larger way. So if you do that with separate number indicators um, and uh, uh, and uh, indicators in with other widgets in click data, that would be a bit more difficult, right? Because you would have to space them um, one by one and make sure that they uh, align correctly. With this, uh, with this widget, it's actually super easy. Obviously, this one has a background, but it could be transparent and make it would could, it could look like it would be very independent blocks of um, of KPIs. Let's move to another example. Yeah, so this one is showing e-commerce uh, numbers. So what I wanted to show you here is actually the fact that it's very simple, but um, I've done this again, right? This KPI uh, and indicator um, design. Um, and you can see that actually there is a limitation here between each element, each, between each block. So I've made it very, very small, but it's actually a separator column. It's uh, just a column which is empty and has a black, black, black background, sorry. Uh, I could have made it right and then, or just transparent so that actually when I space them out, they just look like different blocks. So the layout here, you can see that it's actually one uh, row uh, with um, an indicator and then I have uh, a number and then I have a title. So each of these elements are these repetitive section. And then um, we can see I have sales and orders here. And then here I have a calculation. So in this calculation, I'm actually calculating the average order, which I get from the two other cells. And here I do a calculation where I say, I wanna get the, um, the orders divided by, um, sorry, the sales divided by the number of orders. And that gives me my results. So you can see I've used this cell value reference here. So I'm just doing a calculation between those two. And here again, uh, on, this, uh, on this one, I've just calculated um, that uh, all my orders minus the online orders gives me my store orders. So that's a very simple example of using cell values. That's what I wanted to show you here. Uh, and then let's move on to the next example. In this hospitality uh, scorecard, we have actually um, a list of different properties. Let's say I'm a, a hotel um, chain um, owner and I want to see occupancy in each of the cities where my hotels are. And I can see here that I have laid out for all my, um, all my cities, the occupancy, the ADR and the RefPAR. And um, I don't know if you can see it, maybe you can zoom in a little bit. You can see the uh, the KPIs are different. Uh, so we have percentages here, and then the variation is in points. And here we have uh, actually a currency. And again, the variation here is in percentages. But basically, this is all just one scorecard table. So this is a perfect example where you can see how easy it is to actually um, style and uh, put together numbers from different places and from different types in just one go and just style them very, very similarly. In this case, um, I've used um, a row section here, and in my properties column, I've actually done a, um, a formula as well, where I actually use a data aggregate that goes to my, uh, to my um, data sets, uh, which gets the sum of the occupancy, and, and then I filter by city. And in this city, I integrated that formula, the cell value, that refers to, um, as you can see here, I hope it's not too small, to R0 with the brackets, C1, meaning that I'm actually saying I'm in the same row and from the column one. So I actually refer to that city here. And this one is very similar. It's also um, a, a calculation where I refer to again to that same city. And then the variation here, it's basically just a, um, a calculation between, between those two. 
so that's a way to use these uh, contextual formulas. And um, yes, that's the last example. And then on the finance uh, scorecards example, so that's really a perfect example of everything which the scorecard can help with. In this case here, I have a PNL, a profit and loss sheet, where the calculations show um, things like the total net revenue. So we have revenue streams, and then we have the cost of goods sold. So the calculations and the subtotals at each line are different from one element to the other. In the case of the total net revenue in this cell here, we're doing a sum of all of these. And then in the gross profit, we're actually doing um, we're actually doing uh, taking sorry the uh, the um, the sum of the total net revenue minus the cost of goods sold. So here we can see already that these subtotals they differ from one case to the other, and all of this has been done with contextual formulas, where I refer to um, to a data set where I have all the numbers, uh, the amounts for each semester, and uh, it's filtered on the section or the account name and on the uh, semester. So I built this in minutes. Uh, it was very quick. All of these are row sections as well. And at the end, I have my uh, piano built up very quickly and very easily, and it looks good. And finally, a last example I can show you here is, um, this is just one um, a row, uh, sorry, a scorecard table as well. If you can see, I have different elements here, right? If I hover, you can see them. Uh, just because I've styled them like that, but it's just to show how you can use it. Uh, so I think it's a nice way to to show that you can do more than just tables with this uh, with this widget. And also uh, these two little um, boxes, like mini scorecards. Um, so obviously you could do these with our other widgets, like a number indicator and a symbol indicator. Uh, but in this case, it's also interesting to see that it's very easy to set up with just one scorecard table, and then to replicate, obviously. These are all the examples I wanted to show you. Um, I have now finished with my presentation. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation. We'll do more of these uh, tutorial webinars in the future for, for um, reports, for data flow, and other features. Uh, and uh, please feel free to ask any question. If you have any to our support team, we'll be very happy to help you. And uh, if you have ideas of uh, things that you would see in the scorecard table widget, that's something you can um, uh, tell us about as well. We would be very happy to hear your feedback. Thank you very much.